everybody. Matt and Alex here, here to talk Better Call Saul Season 6. Oh, yeah. Felt like we had to talk about the best show on TV at the moment, right? I mean... Oh, the last best show. Yeah, it is. Or the last greatest show. Great yeah, show, yeah. I guess I should say. Episode 8, Point and Shoot. <laughs> Fucking Following a tragic, tragic death of our Hamlindigo blue-wearing lawyer yeah, man. from... Uh, did I, like this break between that was like two months or whatever i thought about howard like so many times i was just i just feel so bad for him wrong place wrong time and it's just like yeah the cause and effect of you know the decisions that you make this this show and the whole breaking bad universe is just mm-hmm. kind of like that focus on you know the consequences of your actions 100%. and, and the morality of things and it's just so i mean not nice, but like refreshing to see a show display how unfair life can be. Like, right. It's like it's just you. It's like like true to life what happened though. Like, yeah. I mean, I'm obviously not a cartel member doing whatever right. Jimmy and Kim are doing, but like <laughs> shit like that happens. People go missing in like terrible ways, and you'll never understand like what happened or. Yep. And next thing you know, you're getting put in a fridge and dude, shipped off. It's just deserves <laughs> so much better, man. Like he he's just like one of the most tragic characters in the the Breaking Bad universe, up there yeah. with uh, Andrea, and like the dirt bike kid dude. Like those the are like ones caught in the crossfire, man. Yeah, just like the innocent people there witnessing fucking what happened. Yeah. But, in the wake of of all these, like, there's not necessarily a good person in these shows, but all the good people that there are are the side characters, and they end up getting fucking. Just wrapped up destroyed it. yeah you know jesse's like and, the epitome of like a good person i'd say or whatever yeah and even for sure barely makes it through you know like yeah it's crazy man yeah. it's it's so the emotions and the thoughts like just thinking about these episodes and mm-hmm. you know the the fight between like oh is is this a point now that are we gonna look at saul or jimmy differently now because you know what happened to um Howard. Hamlin is just like, I don't know. It's definitely his fault, you know. It's him it's, and Kim. Yeah, it's, it's tough, in man. their hands, you know. It's something they have to live with. And the fact that if he gets over that, is he, you know, is he a good person? No. You know, we still got a root for him. I mean, him after, and Kim. after this moment, it's like everything is deserved for these characters now. Just yeah. in, in general, in like a writing sense, like you could, they could be killed now, in my opinion, and be like, they deserved you it. You got what you deserved. Yeah. Right? yeah. Like it's they are responsible for an innocent man being killed. I mean, it's just that yeah. is what it is. But yeah, I really. I, I, I think, oh, go ahead. I'll just and I think that's what like Gene kind of has come to the conclusion where he's like, I'm done running. You know, I just yeah. keep. I'm constantly running. I'm constantly looking over my shoulders. It's like a life. I'm gonna fix husk. it myself for mm-hmm. once. You know. It make, it makes me think too now that we know what happened. Like, uh, in the preview, I saw that they were like, well, one day we'll never think about it or whatever. You right. know and. I think about Gene, and I'm like, I don't think there's been a day where he hasn't thought about it still. Like, it hasn't, yeah. I don't think it's happened yet, or whatever. Definitely. So, it's never left him, I would say. We don't know what happened to Kim yet, but yeah. I'm assuming this is going to affect her forever, too. Oh, for sure. Mm-hmm. For sure. Like, them being asked to lie about it, that's going to be, I hope we see that scene where, like, a cop questions them, because yeah. that's, I mean, one, for an actor, that's going to be juicy. Yeah. And for our characters, that's juicy, but it's going to be tough to do that i would assume right and you can tell the what was great skipping straight to the end i guess is that scene with mike jimmy and kim and like when he's telling them you know you guys you can't this can't phase you essentially yeah. you, know, you got to go about your normal lives and, and just the and they have the to way be... kim is so dead you know yeah and jimmy's like looking at her like can we really do this like type of thing yeah. like and they have to be the last people to see him alive so like right. they have to really sell the lie, like perfectly, like right. Yeah, man, that's uh, that's crazy. But yeah, I, I have a bunch of notes. Like I just figured we could maybe like walk through the episode. Yeah, in order. definitely. But definitely. It's just man, I'm so happy to be watching this show on air. Like because like I don't know. Like when it, the opening image of just like the waves rolling in, and then you see Howard Shue coming in, yep. and like. I'm just like I literally like said out loud. I was like, "God, this show is just so beautiful," it and is. like just in just simple fucking shots, man. And 
just the like the terrifying conclusion of Howard's character, even right. though it's like a bittersweet image of like a sunset and a beautiful beach, and like that's where Howard's like like yep. the namaste part of Howard, like it's like a perfect end or like a perfect beautiful image, but just wrapped up in like so much darkness. It's like God, it's yeah, it's definitely. The, the the score in this too really you know stands out mm. for, I, don't, I don't know why this episode for me it was just kind of like absolutely all the the tragic things that are constantly happening in this episode and that opening sequence i'm thinking i see the shoe you know you see the shoe roll up and i'm like oh man so because i was thinking this whole time after they kill howard how are they going to get out of this how you know they, how are they, they going to cover up death? how do they yeah and i was just like nope suicide mm-hmm. i mean clearly that was going to ha- be the way out but how are they going to do it and it just the bliss of him going out to the beach and doing it, you know, it's just kind of like the, so the six and seven episodes of set up to like make him seem yeah. like the drug addict, all that shit. Right. It's like perfectly tied now to the world. And like, n- no one would question it. I would say that he yeah. did it. Like, and, and maybe like his Mike wife. said, this is the story that they wove, you know, it's just, right. this is where it ended. You know, you were heading this direction. It just so happened. We, expedited the process you know yeah yeah and this is the ending maybe not what you expected but it's the ending that was bound to happen you know yeah so but yeah, yeah just a beautiful opening just like like simple close-ups a little bit of rack mm-hmm. focus just to reveal some stuff like the wallet and the in the ring yep just like such thoughtful filmmaking and it's just beautiful but then it like cuts right back to where we left off and I was like, yep. like we needed to be right there. Like we needed to get right, right where we it. left off. You yeah. know, mm-hmm. Howard dead on the floor. Oh, just Lalo yeah. playing his sinister self, where he's kind of like, you know, laid back, jokey, but serious. Like he means fucking business. Yeah. Even though he might seem lighthearted, he'll fucking kill you. You know, like, clearly. Yeah. That dialogue yeah. about him just like telling them what they're about to do was just. Yeah. I could feel the anxiety rising in myself, and then yeah. it was just really smart the the point and shoot, obviously, um, right? About how like a gun and a camera, they're both like the right. same principle. It's just good fucking dialogue, man. It's just smart writing, and yep. Yeah, that, I mean that's like it was just so smart. I thought this whole first half hour really to just be like stuck with the characters, mm-hmm. like like they're literally like experiencing the worst night of their lives right and you don't get to escape the scenes that they don't get to escape like with uh yeah. with like kim like moving towards the shooting in the car like the yeah. cops roll up it's just like you're with them and you can't like leave right and it's, and just... it's like real time you know like yeah you're spending this real time with them so the anxiety is even up to, mm-hmm. to the next level because you're like i don't know like you said it, the, the tone that they set up where Jimmy is trying to like tell Lalo, no, send her, send her. And Kim's like, whoa, 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 what are you talking about? And it's like, is Jimmy being a coward or is he trying to protect her and get her to get up, get the fuck out of there? Because Lalo is going to kill somebody Mm -hmm. who's ever in this apartment is going to die. Right. That's what I assume is going through his head. So he wants to get him out of there. So it's like you have the battle of the minds there. Cause Lalo, you were talking earlier about smart characters. And I think Lalo, Lalo, Gus, Walter, those are like the smart characters. Hmm. Like the geniuses of these of this universe, you know, yeah. and seeing Lalo go toe to toe with with Gus, with Saul. Like Saul's up there, you know, mm-hmm. he's just a little more sloppy with it. So seeing him like try to talk Lalo into doing this, but you can't really talk Lalo into doing anything. No. Nah. You know? Yeah, he he's, he went in there with a plan, and he still achieved his plan right. no matter like what he like who went. He didn't really yeah. care, I would say. But that's that was so like so that scene where he's like convincing him mm-hmm. was acted to perfection, I would say, but. Yeah, it's also definitely. like I had that thought. I was like, "Man, is he just that scared that he doesn't want to die?" And then, it, like as it unfolded, I was like, "Oh no, he's he's getting her yeah. out. He's it's just for her." Like the looks he was giving her, like mm-hmm. you know, run essentially. Yeah, you know, get, get safe. I was just like the whole episode. I was just like in a nightmare state because like this is what this whole show has been building towards, mm-hmm. like the downfall of everything, and like we're witnessing it in real time, and it's like just like terrifying i don't know it was like so visceral to me at least and like what this show does where you know these characters gus mike saul 
they all live, mm-hmm. you know. So, but you you're still put on your edge of your seat, like, but what's going to happen? How yeah. are they going to get here? You know, I mean, you still have Kim, you have Lalo, who are going to clearly they still have open endings, so you never know. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, oh shit, Kim's gone. You know, they're going to mark her. But then you know, you get the back of your mind, Mike knows her, but it's just the way they set up these scenes where the tension is always there, even when you know characters are it's crazy make it. man I, you feel yeah. it too i never am in a moment i mean i do have that thought after i'm like wow he's gonna die i'm like well wait no <laughs> yeah because <laughs> like they do it so well that it's like right. holy fuck how does he get out of this right now like with gus i was like how did he survive this like right when lalo's there with him and they show you but like just so fucking good man like there were yeah. many times out loud just watching this show i was just like i literally just said god i love this show so much like I do that all the time, yeah. It's insane. Like, I don't know. And I know a lot of people are just like, this show is art. This is... And then people make it like... But, dude, this is... I don't, I don't know if you can say it enough. This is one of the best shows ever made. Definitely. I mean, the team behind it, the writing... I mean, the, the whole thing is a piece of art. I mean, the right yeah. When it comes down to the, the front end, it's like the writing is fantastic, obviously. And they have to have that as a foundation. Yeah. But it, the way it's executed too, and it's just beautifully executed, so uniquely executed, and mm. it's great, you know. It's fantastic. But uh, yeah, going back to like being stuck with them, I thought one of the like when Jimmy's getting tied up and stuff like that, and it's mm-hmm. like, oh shit, he thinks he's fucking dead right now. That was yeah. I was just like, holy fuck, it's crazy to see Jimmy in this situation. But uh, just like him, like getting knocking down, and then having to look Howard in the face yep. on the ground and then like the, the volume on the TV is up all the way and it's like pure, it's like dude I just need to like turn it off like I need to stop yeah. but like <laughs> you can't dude you're like stuck in this situation man and yeah. it's just brilliant like tension building like just, just I don't know it's just fantastic it's it's crazy too with like like the characters that they make well first off to the tied up scene it was did you realize the I'm sure the when he's tying him up and he's like, no, it was, it was, I don't know, Nacho, all this stuff panicking. It was like when the first episode he's introduced yeah. in Breaking Bad, where he's like, it was Ignacio, blah blah mm-hmm. blah. So that was a good little mirror there. But That's uh, true, yeah. And it also, was, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. It was funny to me when he was like convincing Lalo. He's like, oh, you gotta believe me, man. I wasn't any part of that. Yeah. And I, I was like, as a viewer, or as like just a person <laughs> listening to that, I was like, dude, I wouldn't believe him right now. Like, right. he sounds like he's lying now, and I think it's just because he's been lying so much now, and and like right. he's he's snowballing into Saul, and it's like, dude, this guy is just a kind of a piece of shit who's going to be lying yeah. and doing all this. Like, I mean, he didn't have anything to do with it. It's just like he does. It's like you don't believe him anymore. You know, at least right. I didn't. But. And like, like Lalo said in the past, Saul's a a cockroach you know he's just a survivor right. so he will say anything he, he would say that yeah if, yeah if he was yeah so it's just yeah and it's it's interesting going back to like the writing of these characters a throwaway line from breaking bad lalo nacho two of the most like beloved characters of this show at least especially lalo i mean yeah great character for, for a throwaway character dude a perfect right. villain the fact that they were able to just like bring those two names and just give them life and i don't know make you care about them make you engage with like nacho and be like damn i'm I'm with this guy until the end and lalo you're like this is a perfect villain i like him but i shouldn't you know yeah. and it's just you're still with him until the end even if you yeah. don't like him yeah but I, I listened to the uh podcast that they do and they, they were talking about how they write themselves in the corners or whatever like they don't know mm-hmm. where they're gonna go and they were talking about how it's like a uh, what do you say? It was a it's a feature, not a bug, or whatever. Okay. And I haven't uh, watched the latest episode yet. Oh, I listened okay. to the latest episode. It's basically just saying like because people would question if like they knew what they would do, like if they knew this is where it would go with Lalo and Howard yeah. or whatever, and they were like, not till the very not till the season, you know, like we didn't know. <laughs> Typical like, Vince some, answer. And, yeah, and some people would be like, <laughs> what you know, like how could you have not like you need to know your ending or whatever. But it's really it's that's what writing's all about is like discovery along the way. Like you kind of yeah. know where you need to go, but you like let the fucking story and characters flow. And into honestly, their if own you don't let it, ways. yeah, if you don't let it breathe, then it's you're kind of just writing to a dead end. Yeah. You know, like right. if you want to, I don't know. You have to have the the open mind to be like, okay, this could change. You know, mm. 
and it could be better than what you had in mind you know right. not all plans work out but which these guys out. the writers and the creative team like they can thread the needle like so so finely oh. in the show and like make it seem like it was always gonna inevitably happen you know even if they just came up with it that year oh yeah like they, seamless they, they're good yeah so definitely so trying to remember what the sequence is next after Lalo leaves Saul and then we go to Kim driving over to Gus's house right yeah the and then drives she up pulls next to her she pulls in and it's that the Walter White shot go yeah. home Walter that was another um, time where I was like god this show's so fucking good just that shot yep. I, I didn't even know like link it with the be yeah. like Breaking Bad shot but it's just so fucking beautiful and you see like the shadow slowly start to move and yep. like it's like god damn it and there's like there's two directions to go and she's going the fucking one yep. like straight and it's like god, god i don't know it's just that's, too good that's what i when we when it came on the screen i i did the the leonardo dicaprio meme where i pointed at the tv and i told sarah i was like you you know the shot you know this uh, shot and i'm like yeah. this is this is 32 snub this is walter you can just hear go home walter i'm like right. she's like i don't know what you're talking about i'm like no no that's the shot yeah guaranteed dude. that's the shot that was but, fucking yeah. beautiful also when she's standing in front of the door and it's like yeah. the pillars on either side, I was like, dude, this is like the cathedral of justice that they set up. Like, yep. I was, and it's just like, God damn, dude, just thoughtful filmmaking. Like I said, just giving you the imagery that you need in the moment. Yeah. I don't know. It's just very, very well done. It is. And it's so, everything they do is so well put together so thought provoking and so much thought put into how they like shoot their their scenes it's it doesn't seem like television compared to what we're getting today you know so it's just it's a great time to to be to alive sit, sit alongside and, yeah. and watch this this thing unfold you know even this, this journey even the simple one that got me was when mike comes into the apartment and it's just the camera's just rotated 90 degrees mm -hmm. and he's just like portrait or whatever um I was just like, dude, this show is just so fucking... They just do a little bit extra to make you fucking engage or to, like, yeah. give you a perspective that you haven't seen yet with the camera. When Lalo pulls up the chair and it's got the camera attached to it, mm. I'm like, yep. Yeah. I don't know. that Those those shots do it for me, but... Yeah. And then uh, I think, like, the last one I wrote down as far as, like, shots or camera moves stuff was, like, when Mike's moving through the secret tunnel underground... And oh, the camera's the water? Like super low. Yeah. I was like, shit, man, shit's getting heavy. <laughs> like, we're getting low, man. Yep. And it's yep. just like moving with him all the way through really low and kind of unsteady, you know? Yeah. It's just just adding yeah. some tension, adding some, a little bit of like heaviness to it. But yeah. Just good shit, man. It is. Oh, God. It's like in the whole episode, these past two episodes was like two games of chess going on. And like the first game got over. Mm. And there was a checkmate Howard fucking died you know so now it's round two and now we got a new player and it's Gus and Lalo you know yeah. and you just got Jimmy and Kim on the sidelines they're in the loser bracket but right. it's yeah it's that's true. they're giving oh. tips to the the two players you <laughs> right know, that are still playing. right yeah that's good but also a fun thing is I was reading I guess this was the heart attack episode yeah. yeah they talk about it on the podcast a little bit yeah apparently it that... was like right at the start like you see uh kim and jimmy on the couch yeah and apparently everything they filmed on the couch was like pre-heart attack and then they were switching the camera around to film lalo stuff yeah and it happened like that's when it happened damn that's so. that's also a testament to like the editing yeah. i mean you could never no tell idea. yeah editing acting too i mean it's just so seamless yeah no i'm they talk about that and i was just like remembering back to that time and how crazy that was and yeah i mean i mean for bob to even come out of that is incredible right but that must have and, been one of the worst days ever on set and one of the and things in general right and what are you saying he's like when i was reading the article he said yeah i don't remember that day i don't remember a week and a half after that day mm. you know and it's just like wow that's that's that having a blank space yeah. where you don't remember that stuff it's got to be pretty wild yeah, you know because he sure. died you know so that's that's crazy that is man but to come back and just 
deliver this masterpiece. That's he knew he couldn't die because this story was not done. Right. Yet. Like right. It wasn't his time. It needed to be done. Needed to be told yep. and finished because this and Breaking Bad, man. I, I think I might watch them back to back because it's gonna be. I was thinking during this, like, if if no one had, if someone hadn't watched Breaking Bad and watched this show, it'd be just as enjoyable. Oh, it, for sure. Maybe not just as enjoyable, but like in the same way, it's got to be so fucking good. Like, if you don't know, Gus survives with Lalo and him down in the in the pit or whatever. Yeah. That would be like such a tension filled scene. It still was, but like, I just wonder what a view would be like from right from not knowing, but yeah. from the other perspective, yeah. it's like. I was thinking today, it's like, I don't, I don't, I'm not a connoisseur of most foods, but this compliments Breaking Bad and so, and, you know, vice versa, you know, the way they just make you enjoy characters like Gus. I, I enjoy his character way more now knowing his, these backgrounds, what he went through to get his super lab and let Walter yeah. fucked up, you know, and it's just, I, I, I've told you that in the past and his character, Jimmy's character, obviously one of the, my favorite characters ever written because he's just so relatable. His relationship with Chuck, mm. you know, he's always down on his luck, but then now we're at this point to where he's like, okay, well, he's kind of a scumbag. So should he still, you know? Not, yeah. No, it's, but, it's by far the best prequel ever made the best well, for sure of like any spinoff ever made because it like, it deepens the original, like literally yeah. with like a grave below the, uh, yeah, the fucking lab. Now there's literally shit deeper, but like, <laughs> Yeah, but it doesn't like cheapen it. It like now if I watch Breaking Bad and see, I'll like in the lab I'll always be thinking of what's below now. Yeah, in a new cool way that I the place is a fucking tomb. Yeah, and yeah, it's like I don't know. That's fucking good, man. Yeah, it's it's definitely these two shows. I'm I thought the same thing. Once I finish this, I'm gonna go back and and start Breaking Bad over and just watch Breaking Bad through Better Call Saul. Yeah, but. uh I'm excited yeah, to see at the uh, end of this series if if we do get some Breaking Bad timeline and stuff. Yeah. That'll be cool now to see where it like, interconnects and stuff. For sure. Yeah. And I think we will. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think we're going to do a time jump here after this next episode mm-hmm. and get to, you know, Gene. So. I could see some uh, classic Breaking Bad like time lapse stuff where right. you see the lab built. And you see, like, Saul's office changing or his clients changing and yeah. stuff like that. That's exactly what I was thinking. Just those mm-hmm. those time lapses where they have those nice montages. I was thinking, too, if what time would they jump into in the Breaking Bad timeline? And yeah. maybe, like, Jane's death could be a good time. Because, because Mike's introduced. Yeah, because why did Saul call Saul called him to clean up the body? Because he clearly did it. He sees him do it right now with Howard. Right. But, like... Gus knows about Saul and he must yeah. have like sent Mike to help too because this is a prospect for, for an Walt. employee. Right? Yeah, so it's I don't know. I think you could maybe do a little nuance in there in that timeline. For but, sure. You know. For sure. Yeah. But who yeah, knows? That would be a, that would be a good insert, a good start point. Right. Cuz we've um, already seen the the original in- intro to Saul, so might right. as well. You know? Yeah, you don't want to just replay that. You want to yeah. kind of deepen a little bit of the world and character. But, um, yeah. but yeah, I, I, I don't know. The next thing I had for as far as like the episode goes was just when they start to get down in the pit. Like Lala, well, just, yeah. Lala just getting a little too cocky. Like that's his downfall. Yep. Cause he, and it's it's funny too because some might argue, oh, this isn't. This is lazy writing, you know, but no, this is true to Lalo's character. Mm-hmm. He's always been like this, you know, he's always had that shit eating grin of off. like, I'm going to win. Yeah. I'm, I'm already won, you know? And, and then he's checking his time. He's like, I got 13 minutes. Let's do it. Yeah. You know, it's like you so, get one minute to, yeah. uh, there was, I was smart too. Cause when he's got the camera on Gus and then we, they get down to the lab mm-hmm. and then Gus starts to move down the stairway. Yeah. There's like a moment I thought where Lalo kind of questions like why he's moving or whatever. And then he, like, just follows him because he's still talking to Eladio on the camera. Yeah. And so, like, there's, like, a slight moment of hesitation for, like, what, what what's Gus doing? And then he just follows him and kicks him down or whatever. But yeah. That's, like, he had that moment. And if he didn't just, like, keep going with his, like, cocky right. showmanship, he could have ended it there. He could have ended it before that. But he just had to show off, had to show Don Eladio what he could do and what 
what he was doing and it's just right hmm. yeah that was that, that's good too i mean any other show you would think oh that was just convenient but this one it worked you know mm-hmm. stuck true to the characters it's not like gus was like a sharpshooter he didn't do like a barrel roll grab the pistol no he fired blindly it was all luck yeah there was nothing and you know, he like and out kept about that the i liked how he like kept pulling the trigger after like 10 more yeah. times it's, it's probably the most intense situation he's ever been in i would say as for, right. life or death but like He's as composed as a person could be in a story, but he in that moment he's adrenaline filled and right. Keep it's he's like keep pulling. It's like you, we don't see Gus like shaking his boots anymore after Lalo's gone because that was his last like worthy Fear. adversary. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know, someone who can match his Dude. his intelligence, his planning every move, yeah. having having something in the back of his pocket ready to just whip out. And so that's why, you know, you see Gus shaking his shoes and it's like a worthy opponent, you know? Mm-hmm. You have Lalo, who is clearly living under Albuquerque for who knows how long. <laughs> just pop just out any second and out. murder you. Right. Yeah. And it's just, and yeah, it's, I'll, it's I'll say, so well done. I think I've been a little bit not down on Esposito, Giancarlo Esposito. Not, I just thought that Gus's character was getting a little repetitive or whatever. Mm-hmm. That we've already seen him do whatever he's been doing. But his speech to the camera and to lalo was like oh like, yeah oh my god it was like so fucking cathartic and beautiful like perfectly like anger filled right he had that hatred for mm-hmm. eladio the cartel what they did to him some of like the pack yeah. of stray dogs fighting for scraps has more honor than don eladio i was like yeah <laughs> and then i literally hooted for joy when he called the salamancas whores oh I was yeah like Woo! <laughs> It, I don't know, man. It was just everything about that was perfect, I thought. And then he slowly, like, setting himself up to, like, kick the light off and yep. get going. And It's it's just crazy that whole time he's still playing chess, you know. Um, Lalo, he's sitting back. He's like, I got this in the bag, you know. And, and Gus is just talking, d- delivering these fucking, these sweet one-liners, talking about all these people, yeah. shit talking. And the whole time he's planning, okay, I got to get to this point. So mm-hmm. I can get to my gun, you know. Yeah. So it's just two worthy adversaries, and that and one then, like, final grin of Lalo at the end, where he's like, "You son of a bitch!" Laugh. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, just you did it, man. That's like what made me, like, say I was like, when he died, I was like, that was like a perfect villain, like Agent yeah. of Chaos doesn't give a fuck about anyone else really, yeah. and then at the end he's laughing yeah. about like life and whatever the situation he just died in or whatever and yep he had that last last one of his little cheeky grins where he's mm-hmm. like i'm still me man yeah you can't take that from me gus yeah god yep. this is so good brilliant brilliant yep. show and then down to the the technicalities gus calling into that guy saying hey i need you to take care of this like, <laughs> lyle business. dude straight business yeah man <laughs> he's getting patched up and yeah. on the phone with his employee. I need you to hold down the fort for me. Lyle is like one of the best characters in the universe. <laughs> so he's such such a nice guy, man. He deserves uh, to. He deserves he needs to. A raise. Yeah, seriously, he needs something. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, after, I mean, you could have ended the episode with Gus and Lyle or whatever. But, mm-hmm. um, and I thought that. Gus in the dark after he pulls the trigger was really smart in a moment where I was feeling like, oh God, did he get him? Did he fucking? I yeah. Like, I thought Lalo got out. Yeah. Like what's going to happen? Like we, well, we know it's going to happen to Gus, but that's, yeah. that's one of those moments. And the way that was played was really smart. He like slowly goes and then turns the light on. Yeah. And then he, Lalo dies and then Gus falls into the light. That's just fucking beautiful. But uh, it's, it's another thing, a testament to these writers is that, like, any other show would have milked this for another, like, six episodes, you know? This whole scene where yeah. they could have ended where Lalo goes into the thing, Gus comes in, and he loses his men, you know? Oh, mm-hmm. cliffhanger. Let's wait till the next episode and then do another cliffhanger. But, like, they need to get somewhere, you know? They, they have a goal in mind. To tell still, and right, and like, they can't be tied up. Like, I was surprised know? when Nacho bit it so early. Because I was yeah. like, fuck, Mike, we're, this is the last season. Yeah, shit. And then Lalo's yeah. gone. 
but it, I'm not sad or I'm not mad at the pace of it. I just know right. that we're in for more story that needs to be told, and definitely, I'm. I mean, totally on board. We still have to figure out what happened to Kim. Yeah, Jean. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, shit. Yep. It's they definitely. I don't doubt them not for a second. Not at all. So it's just like the way that they able they pace themselves constantly, but when they want to get something done, they get it done, and it doesn't feel rushed. So yeah. It's brilliant, right? I wish I had just a a dabble of the talent of this this writing crew, man. It's They're just, smart. They just think it out. Like they don't yeah. they don't go the easy way. They don't go the cheap way. They go the way that they know they need to do it. And as right. long, if they if that's a little bit harder to think about or to get into the character's mind and really act like them, like yeah. they, they're not going to sacrifice that at all. I'd say. In like the mailbag episode of their podcast, did you listen to that one? Uh, maybe I maybe did. I don't remember. It was they asked like the writers questions and the things that they always says Peter Gold and and Vince, you know, and I think it was Tom Schnauz. Mm-hmm. They said, you know, your audience is smart. You know, mm-hmm. don't write this show, don't write your shows or your stories like explaining things to them because right. they're smarter than you. You know, so which shows with this, you know, they they don't spell things out in dialogue. They show it. Yep. You draw the conclusions, you know? So yeah. it's just listening to that podcast, which I need to get to the episode. I've been listening to other podcasts, reviews, mm. and I save theirs best for last. So, so I need good. to see what they talk about in this episode. But, yeah, it's just I learned so much just listening to them. You Seriously, know? yeah. It's, and that's why I love listening to them, too, is, like, where they said they don't know really until they're, like, writing. Like, it's, like, yeah. they're very honest about it, and that's refreshing to yeah. hear, too, is, like, you gotta sure. like you're not you don't know until you start writing and breaking it and like yeah. that's scary but if you do the work do the do the effort you'll get to the right answer you know definitely and, yeah that's good to see and there's no rush you mm-hmm. know the way they six uh, seasons of a prequel like you could at any time be tempted to like push and oh, go yeah. you know and they they let it breathe for sure yeah it's damn but uh well, well yeah i guess we should end on that last like haunting image of lalo and howard in the same grave dude yep and like <clears throat> when mike's talking to jim and kimmy you know and they crack the door open and they you just see howard getting shoved in the, in the fridge, fridge. Just like, and jimmy's just kind of like damn this mm-hmm. is real you know yeah and then you get mike where he's like i didn't sign up for this bullshit like i kill people who are in the game yeah. And then it turns out, you know, Howard's not in the game, but you know, he's he's disappointed. Yeah. But at the same time, it's not his he didn't write this story for them. Howard I mean yeah. Jim and Kimmy wrote the story for Howard and it just ended this way, you know? Yeah, it was a good bookend too at the end with him taking Howard's stuff, yeah. linking it back to the opening, you know. Right. And Mike is like the soul of the Breaking Bad universe, I'd say. He's just got yeah. he's got that essence of like the shittiness he's dealing with while still like moving on with it because yeah. he, that's what he does and yeah you can, i mean obviously he's like easy with howard like he feels when he needs to but he knows that he can't to a certain right. point you know and and it's interesting his character you know he has that the moral battle with you know he's obviously he was a cop mm-hmm. you know he lost his son but now when he's getting into this mix with gus and stuff he kind of fights with the idea of like this is bad but at the same time he feels for gus's situation and mm. he's like okay i'll look at it from this perspective of you know these are bad people yeah so i'll do it you know and gus is a reasonable respectable guy in his eyes apparently but... yeah well they, they just did such smart work and even like season two by setting up a hatred between him and the salamancas you know like right. mike and the salamancas like just a little bit of legwork to make him be on Gus's side. But yeah. then now that he's in, he has to be like a lot of the times the voice of reason to Gus because right. he does have like that, a little bit of that moral code yeah. to show him what's right and wrong. Like you're never going to be able to kill an innocent person with Mike because he's not going to let you. And right. I think Gus obviously appreciates that too. Definitely. But it's just, they know, they know their characters, man. And they, they let them dictate how they should act. So definitely for sure. And like Mike's definitely one to root for the, the underdogs. Obviously Jesse was under his wing mm. Nacho, you know? Yeah. So the fact that, you know, 
the hatred of the Salamancas continues and gave him that little bit of fuel to to finish this whole Lalo situation because, you know, that's why Nacho died. He was being fucking drugged through the mud by the yeah. Salamancas, Gus, and things like that, you know? It's actually nice now to think, too, that Mike, when he goes to kill the other brother yeah. in, in Breaking Bad, like, it is kind of linked with Nacho now, too, where he's, like, a little Definitely. bit of revenge on that, you know? Yeah. That paid cool. Paid some justice to him. Mm-hmm. But. Well, I mean, for me, 10 out of 10 episode easily sure. one of the best episodes of television i've ever seen I, I don't know i just i was super engaged and super the, into it the pacing of these last two episodes is just mm-hmm. i mean you have the, the, all this setup in these two episodes mm. yeah paid off and that they, they, they displayed that they displayed like both spectrums of this world too for better call saul mm-hmm. Which like the last episode was like the sh- the shenanigans and fun of fun and games that Jimmy loves and Kim loves, right. Right. and then descends into the fucking criminal underworld that we actually inhabit for yeah. this episode. It's just like the two sides of the coin of this show, right? And that, I mean that's why I love it. And this show is like perfect, and it's its tone is like perfect. Definitely, I would say. it's crazy, crazy, well, crazy time to be alive. Yeah, man. love we're, it. We're definitely lucky to be witnessing it at this moment. I'd say for sure and watching it week by week is very rewarding i would say too oh, binging yeah. it uh, it would be fun and be good a good watch but you'd lose a little bit of the prestige i'd say yeah we have i, right I would agree and you have time to like chew it over too like right now. like you said i was thinking about howard and how they're gonna get to the next phase of the story after yeah. the tragic ending of this last episode you know yeah and it just gives you time to mull it over like like now I'm thinking, well now we we know what's we're gonna get to Gene's timeline and he's in Omaha, mm-hmm. and we remember Kim's license plate, her mom's license plate was Nebraska, so like maybe she went back, maybe she used the black book and restarted her life right. somewhere else, right. and it just so happened Gene's in Omaha, mm-hmm. but it's, it's a just, little too convenient for me. I mean, if yeah. you, if if you're these writers, and right? You've set these now and you you do it like you get as get along the way what you can get. Right, you've set yourself up for success right now. I would say but. it's it's a, it's good to to have a show that makes you actually you know think too. Mm. You know, it's not just mindless vomit thrown onto the screen yeah. to make you be happy for a couple of days. It's you know it's and, good. It's rewarding. Yeah, and like you said, it doesn't spell out shit for you. Yeah, but it doesn't confuse you. Like it gives you enough to like you like you have to engage and your brain's working the whole time and enjoying the imagery right. and hmm. yeah brilliant so uh talk same time next week yeah for yeah. sure yeah i've been I, I talked to one of my other buddies about it but it's not as in depth obviously but yeah i i love to just gush about this show so I, i'd be down to do it for every episode i don't know if Definitely. anyone listening is interested in that but it's what it's the best show on tv right now and we got to talk is. about it honestly so definitely yeah, I'll be back next week for sure. Sweet. All right. Well, hope you guys are too. Enjoy yep. your week. Thanks for joining us. Stay gold. Stay gold. Stay gold.